Good afternoon, church. Uh, welcome back to the Taurus series. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. We did take a week off, and uh, it was a good rest. I had a good time with some family and friends, and so played some good games, ate some good food, of course, and uh, I am ready to get back to it. Um, if, if you are in youth, remember, every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. at the Refuge House, we are live and in person. We are going to be doing this very lesson live and in person reading with real Bibles, seeing real people. I'm really going to be there. It's going to be awesome. So every Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, be there if you are 6th grade through 12th grade. Um, today, we are back in Exodus. We actually have maybe one or two left after today that will be in Exodus, and then we're going to move on to Leviticus. Um, but in the story where we are, we have seen Israel being delivered and rescued from Egypt and they cross the Red Sea and they go into the wilderness and they um, I think two weeks ago we were we were at the mountain of God where where God met with Israel and gave them the Ten Commandments and actually God's voice thundered and just kind of shook the mountain and the people could hear God's voice even as he spoke the Ten Commandments and so it was it was an incredible sight it was an incredible story and uh, we went through, talked about what the Ten, Ten Commandments mean. Now we're going to get, from here on out for a while, we're going to get to a lot of instructions and rules and different things. But um, we're going to go through kind of one by one um, as, as much as we can. We're not going to hit every single rule or, or instruction, but we're going to go through one by one and talk about, and what does this mean? Why, why does it matter? It wasn't mean for us, even though we're not... We're not part of the people of Israel back then, right? We're not part of that. We're not under under the same law, right? But what does it mean for us, and how do we understand it to apply it to our own lives? Well, today is a really important piece of everything, and we're going to be talking about the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle was a very important structure that God God called Moses and the rest of the Israelites to come together and build to his exact specifications. So there's all these different parts and pieces of the tabernacle, and he gives very specific specifications on how it needs to be built, how big everything needs to be, what it needs to be made of, and, and everything, how it needs to be put together. Um, all the dimensions is very meticulous, and so... We're just going to dig into what the tabernacle is. As you can see from, from uh, what I've got on the on the notes here, we've got the mercy seat, the tabernacle, the priestly garments, and the consecration of the priest. We're going to go through all of that today and see, see what he says. So first of all, let's I want to bring up something here. Um, he, he tells them that they need to make a tabernacle. And he gives them a reason for this. And we'll talk about that reason in a bit. But let me see if I can bring this up. You guys see that? There we go. You can see it now. Okay, this is kind of generally what the tabernacle probably looked like. Because in the Bible, there's some very specific things of, of what it says. Like this goes here and this goes here. The north side, the south side, east side, west side. All this stuff. And so we can get a pretty good idea of what it means. So let's look at it here for a second. Um, let's see here. Uh, there we go. You can see my cursor there. All right, so this right here, the whole thing is the tabernacle, but it's inside what would be considered a courtyard. All this stuff to the side here, it's an actual a courtyard. So you have the tabernacle inside the courtyard. Just outside of the tab tabernacle, there's not this random guy standing there. There's going to be a, an altar uh, an altar of, of sacrifice and also like a wash basin, like a place that holds water to, to, to clean yourself, right? And so two things are outside. So you have, you know, not, not anywhere close, like the place that's not anywhere close to the tabernacle. Then you have the courtyard, which is the, the place right around the tabernacle. And in the courtyard is the altar and the, the, the wash basin or the, the laver. And then you have um, the tabernacle and you have special curtains that separate the courtyard from the inner parts of the tabernacle. Then you get this part and this is all specified in, in the scriptures and we don't have the time to, to read it specifically but 
Um, but this is what it talks about. It talks about, okay, on this side, um, I believe this is the south side that it's talking about, is going to be the lights, these candles. And you specifically make this, this lamp stand in a specific way with seven candles, and, and the cups have to be a certain way, and they have to, you know, have to look a certain way. And so that's where this lampstand comes from. You might, you might recognize the, the Jewish menorah. Well, that's where this comes from. It, it comes from God's specifications on how to build this lampstand, right? And so there's that. And then across from that on the north side is the, the table of the showbread, um, which it just has bread on it. Um, and it's, it ha it's part of the ceremony, right, and everything. Um, and right by the, uh, the next curtain, as of course, it only shows the curtain halfway open, right? But usually the curtain would be closed. Right by this next curtain would be the altar of incense. And so this is where you would do, you would, you know, burn incense as part of, of a ceremony as well. So you step inside this first curtain and you're in what's called the holy place. The holy place, right? And this is like kind of one step closer into God's presence because this is where God's going to meet with them okay so you have the courtyard which is close to God's presence the holy place which is one step closer to God's presence and you have all these these three things in there made to exact specifications and then you have a certain curtain that has cherubim woven into it cherubim are, are angels right and so you have cherubim woven into uh this curtain, you know, specifically made in a certain way with certain material. Um, and then you go behind the curtain and you go in, you move in from the holy place to the holy of holies or the most holy place. And the only thing in this most holy place is what's called the Ark of the Covenant. And on top of the Ark of the Covenant is the mercy seat. And it has certain things engraved on top of it. Um, and this, the mercy seat, is where God's presence would come down and meet whoever was there in the tabernacle. And so, guys, th this is God's direct way to come and be with his people. And only one person gets to be in the direct presence of God. By the way, inside the Ark of the Covenant... Um, the only thing at first that was held inside the Ark was the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. And so you've got this Ark, and inside of it's the Ten Commandments, and on top of it um, is the mercy seat where God comes and and dwells with his people. And and well, who, who gets to? Who, who gets to be this one guy? Well, let's see here. Let, let me bring this back. Bring this back. Okay, so we talked about the mercy seat, and th that's all part of the tabernacle. And, and these are the chapters where you find this. So Exodus chapter 25 talks all about the mercy seat. 26 is the tabernacle. 28 is the priestly garments. 29 is the consecration of the priests. So maybe you guessed it. You probably already knew. But the only person that gets to be in the Holy of Holies, go into the tabernacle, is the high priest. Let's just write this down. The high priest, the only one with direct access to the Holy of Holies. So that means he's the only one with direct access to God. Now, the very first time this ever happened, it was Aaron himself. Aaron was the high priest, and Aaron's sons were the other priests. And so there's a special thing that had to happen. You can't just walk up to the Holy of Holies and, and say, hey, open up that curtain for me. Let's do this. You know, I want to be in the presence of God. You can't do that because if you did that, you would just straight up die. You would be destroyed. You are unholy. You're so unholy that God's holiness would destroy you. Okay, so there's a whole ceremony, a whole cleansing that had to happen. And it only happened with whom God appointed to happen. I want to read chapter 28, verse 2. It says this. 
I'll read verse 1 and 2. Then bring near to you Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the people of Israel to serve me as priests. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. So this is God calling out. He says, okay, Aaron and his sons, these are going to be my priests. These are the ones that are going to come into my presence. Verse 2. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron and your brother, uh, for Aaron, your brother, sorry, for glory and for beauty, for glory and for beauty. <laughs> that, just, that, that just struck me as, as kind of funny, but really kind of cool. Um, the priestly garments for glory <laughs> and for beauty. God is interested in beauty. He's interested in things looking good. The, the things that are allowed into his presence are the things that are glorious and beautiful. And let me, let me move this a little bit so you can see that. Are things that are glorious and beautiful. So these are the things that they're going to be wearing when they come into um, his presence, when they come into the tabernacle and minister to the Lord. Um, in verse 12, it talks, I'm not going to read all these, but in verse 12, it talks about part of what they have to wear, right? They have to wear so many things, but one of the things that they have to wear, they have to wear these shoulder pieces. And in the shoulder pieces, there are stones that are engraved with the names of the sons of Israel. So all 12 of the names of the, the tribes of Israel, of Israel, right? Those names are engraved on these stones and he, Aaron wears them on his shoulders to present himself and present the names of the Lord, uh, the names of Israel to the Lord for remembrance is what the scripture says. And then also the breast piece of judgment is what it was called. He would have to wear this breast piece and, and that also had 12 different stones. And, and the 12 different stones each had an engraving of, a, of one of the names of the tribe of Israel. And so this was the to bring before the Lord the remembrance of the people of Israel, right? That Aaron, Aaron would do this. And the judgment of Israel would fall on the priest. That's interesting, isn't it? So, remembrance, remembrance, how do you spell that? And judgment and guilt. So, the, the judgment and and the guilt of the people would fall on the priests. And this was all symbolized through the stones on the breastpiece and the shoulder pieces that were engraved with the names of the tribes of Israel. And so this high priest would basically would, would bear the guilt and bear the judgment of the, the rest of the nation. All the rest of the nation. Anyone who is Israel, who is God's people, they don't go into, into his presence. They don't go into God's presence. God appoints and calls out a person to come into his presence, to bear the names of the sons of Israel, to represent everyone in Israel, and bear the guilt and bear the judgment. This is, this is cool. This is all coming together, isn't it? You recognize something so far. We'll talk about it here in a bit. But here's a couple of the things that or I, I tried to get all the things that, that they had to wear. So we already talked about the shoulder piece and the breast piece. You had to wear a coat. They had to wear a robe. They had to wear an, an, an ephod, which is kind of like, uh, kind of like an, un, I think that's the underpiece. Yeah, I, could, I could be wrong on that. But anyway, there's a breast piece. There's a, there's a skillfully woven ephod band. Uh, I'm not really sure what that means. But <laughs> there's a turban. And there's a holy crown that goes on the turban. And so all these things are specifically written out on how to make this and what to make it from and how they're supposed to put it on and everything. And so these specific things, you had to wear these. Only Aaron could do it. And these things, you could, you could come in. But just because you're Aaron and just because you have these things on, doesn't mean, still doesn't mean you can just waltz right in. You had to go through a whole consecration process. And the very first process for Aaron and his sons took seven whole days of consecration. 
And, and here's what all they had to do for those seven days, okay? Man, this, this is wild. Just, just think of what this means, and we'll talk about it. Okay, first of all, they had to wash with water. Aaron had to go and wash. And in the, the, there's that wash basin just outside of the entrance to the tabernacle that's still inside the courtyard, right? Had to go to that wash basin. Wash, wash basin. Goodness, say that three times fast. And wash, do a, a ceremonial cleansing, right? Then they put on the priestly garments. Then they pour anointing oil on the head of Aaron. And they do this also for the sons. The, the sons had to wash and put on the garments and do the priestly oil. Then they had to bring a bull up to the altar that's in the courtyard. And they had to, Aaron and his sons laid hands on the bull. And this was part of the ceremony. And then they killed the bull and they put him on the altar. And they, in a, in a special way, they had to um, burn the bull on the altar and they only had to you know, burn certain parts. There are certain parts that they could burn, certain parts that they had to take outside the camp, all, all this thing, all this stuff, right? Um, it was a whole ceremony, okay? And then they, the bull wasn't the only thing that they had to burn on the altar, okay? They had to bring a ram and they had to lay hands on it and kill the ram and they had to throw the blood of the lamb against the sides of the altar. And then they cut the ram in pieces and and burn that as an offering. And then they have a second ram. So they got a bull and a ram, now a second ram. And they kill that, and they put the blood, instead of throwing that on the sides of the altar, they put blood on the tip of their right ear, and on their right thumb, and then on their right big toe. And this is for Aaron and all their sons. Did you know this? This is, this is crazy. This is wild. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Okay. Um, so you got... Aaron had blood on, or got, got blood on the tip of his ear, on the thumb, and on, on his big toe, on the right toe. Okay, then you take the rest of the blood and and throw it against the sides of the altar, and you take some of the blood that's on the altar, and and take it from the altar and sprinkle it on Aaron's clothes. Whoa, and 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 Aaron's sons. Okay, and things are getting bloody. <laughs> things are getting a little weird okay <laughs> then you take bread and you do a wave offering and then you take the ram fat um and and you eat uh you take the ram fat and you do a wave offering with, with the ram fat um and then you eat the ram they had to eat the ram and the bread and all this happened they had to wear all this stuff and do these constant sacrifices for seven days, making daily sacrifices. Whew. Wow. What what does this all mean? Why do you have to be a certain person called out by God? Why, why do you have to wear certain clothes? Why do you have to do these elaborate ceremonial cleansings and sacrifices? Even before you could step into the holy place, not to mention the most holy place. And it, it all comes down to this. And let's go to chapter 29. Chapter 29, verse 42. Let me find it real quick. 29, verse 42. Okay. It says this. It shall be a regular burnt offering throughout your generations. At the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet with you to speak with to speak to you there. There I will meet with the people of Israel, and it shall be sanctified by my glory. It's talking about the tabernacle. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. Aaron also and his sons I will consecrate to serve me as priest. Here it is, verse 45. This is the key. I will dwell among the people of Israel and be their God. I will dwell among the people of Israel and be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord, that I am Yahweh, their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. So this this is it, guys. Like, this is the whole purpose. This is the reason God rescued them. This is the reason God had that plan in the first place, right? 
This is part of God's big plan to, to crush the head of the serpent and reverse the curse and bring man back into relationship with him. It is, is that word right there, that the little, little word, dwell. Let's put that in dwell. God wants to dwell with his people. He does all this. Let me bring it back up. Oops. All this, all the courtyard and the altar and the wash basin and the, the elaborate curtains and the light and the bread and the incense and another curtain and the altar and the mercy seat and the Ten Commandments inside of the Holy of Holies and the priestly garments and the consecration and the seven days. Everything is for this one purpose so God can dwell with his people. So what's the big what's the big thing here? What what's the big thing? Well, we we've just said that this is all for God to dwell with his people, but what does this all mean? That God is is holy, holy, holy. Like you can't just go into the courtyard cuz God's holy. You you can't just go into the holy place because God is holy, holy. And you certainly can't go into the most holy place because God is holy, holy, holy. Like this is all so that we know who God is and so that we know who we are compared to God. If we didn't, if, if Aaron didn't do this, if Aaron didn't consecrate himself and wear these things and do these ceremonial things, um, this was God's way of making Aaron holy and righteous and cleansed for the fact that he's going to be in God's presence. If Aaron didn't do this, he would be destroyed. That That's just straight up the point. Like he would be destroyed by God's holiness. It would over, it's like if the sun wanted to hug the earth, like the sun is so big and burning and, and, and holy in its own way, right? It's a certain type of holy, not, not in the same way that God is, but, but if, if the, the bigness and, and the, the fire of the sun just kind of came up to the earth and said, I want to give you a big old hug, what would happen? <laughs> it would get destroyed. The, the earth would just straight up be destroyed. It, Aaron had to be made holy and righteous to represent the people to God and come into the direct presence of God. That, that's what it's all about. So that's the big thing. Now let's talk, let's end with this. What, what's the small, what are the small things that kind of add up to all that? What's all, all these little things, uh, all the, the light and the bread and the incense and the altar, what, you know, What's the point of all that? Let me bring this back. It's right here. Okay, so the altar, let me move this. Boom, over here. The altar was God's wrath, wholly consuming the burnt offering. The bronze laver was for cleansing, had to be purified, made holy, uh, your, your your sinfulness had to be washed away, and th this this cleansing in the wash basin symbolized that. The golden lampstand represented light. The table showbread represented the bread. It, it was the bread, okay? The light and the bread and the cleansing. The altar of incense is a fragrant offering to God, a, a good fragrant smell that rises up to God, okay? Uh, the Ark of the Covenant, um, some have said, and, and uh, this might just be conjecture, but some, some have said that the gold would represent deity and the wood of the ark represented humanity. Okay, see where this is going? Uh, the mercy seat is God's wrath propitiated, or that just means that God's wrath is appeased and averted from, uh, from the sinner and, and off of the sinner and onto the one who is bearing the judgment. Uh, there were three sections we already talked about the the, the, the outer courts the the holy place and the and the holy of holies the inner holy place the most holy place God is holy 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 and there's 
a separation between God and man. And finally, the high priest. We need, man needs a high priest to be kind of an in-between person between God and man who is able to stand holy and righteous in the very presence of God and bear our judgment and bear our guilt. Do you see where I'm going with this? This is why we need Jesus. This is it. Read Hebrews. It goes through all this. It says, it says hey, Jesus is the better this. Jesus is the better that. Now, Jesus, read John. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the bread. <laughs> Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. Like, like, this is what the whole New Testament is talking about, trying to make us see that everything that happened in the Old Testament, everything that happened with the tabernacle and the mercy seat and the Holy of Holies and the priestly garments and everything, it's all fulfilled by Jesus. Jesus is, let me put this right here. We'll end it like this. Jesus is our high priest. Boom. Jesus is our high priest. And all of that, read this. Read chapter 25, Exodus chapter 25 through 28, 29, 30. And just think of how Jesus has already, and he has now for us, fulfilled every single part of this tabernacle. Jesus is how now we dwell with Yahweh. See you guys next week.